Thank you for the introduction. Um, this is Sneha, and I'm going to be talking today about leading in a world of constant change. Uh, before I start, I would love to quickly introduce myself, um, and then we can talk about how exactly are we going to lead in this world of constant change. Um, I grew up and studied in India, specifically in Bangalore. Um, I grew up in a family of writers, both my parents being um, noted Kannada writers. Um, they've always used creativity to drive focused results. Um, I moved to the United States uh, to pursue my master's in CMU a decade ago. Um, and I've been leading strategy for company like Sears, Walmart, and currently at Sephora. Um, in Sephora, I lead all of the product, including digital, stores, data, and marketing technology. I strongly believe that awareness is the first step towards making a change. Um, I'm an introvert by nature, and I'm in the journey of figuring out how being an Indian introverted woman, I can navigate in this big technology world and hopefully um, add a little bit of value in the right way. Um, having faced this myself and being aware of others' experiences, um, I hope to raise consciousness of the basic biases that women face in this environment, any environment, uh, to ensure that we not only overcome the same together, but work towards eradicating it. Um, I strongly believe that the pen is mightier than the sword. And I intend to keep it that way. Um, so probably if I was not in the technology space right now, I would be um, a writer or a chef um, riding myself away in some secluded mountain space in, you know, in a cabin. Um, that's a quick intro. Um, now let's jump in to uh, what we're here to talk about. So human beings are very resilient. And if the pandemic has taught us anything, it's the fact that, you know, we can adapt to any change. But we really didn't um, need the pandemic to tell us this. Um, for example, like being an introvert, I totally appreciate working from home. And I think my pandemic puppy also does too, because he loves the fact that I'm here and I'm spoiling him all the time. Um, but apart from just the pandemic, I think resilience is a um, innate human capacity that can be learned and developed in anybody. So all people have the ability to develop the skills that will put them on the path to resilience. Um, according to research done, um, resilience is the human capacity to navigate and negotiate culturally meaningful resources to sustain um, our well-being. So it has to do a lot with person's ability to make plans, follow through with them, to problem solve, and to manage impulses and feelings. Resilience is more than a skill, it's an adaptation. So we understand also that it's a process, it's a journey that you just don't wake up one day and you're like, okay, I'm resilient now, right? You go through a lot of experiences right from your childhood um, that continues throughout your lifespan. Our lives are constantly evolving narratives and so is the pathway to resilience. Um, and the equally important parallel process of learning through these changes. Um, while I was thinking about the statement of like, hey, how resilient are humans? Um, one thing that I was um, pausing and reflecting is um, what are the incidents that in my life that I have, I can say that have placed me where I am today? I know there are many, many such incidents, but I picked a few to share with you today. Um, I'm sure each of you have your own journey and it might be an interesting exercise to go through this, to identify a few of them, to just show the process that you have taken while you were on this path of identifying change and adapting to the changes that you went through. Uh, one of the earliest memories I have was probably when I was eight years old um, and my mom decided to go back to college and do her master's in arts. Uh, my mom was a housewife and before that, and, you know, a lot of things like I would say spoiled my sister and me because 
she made sure that everything was happening at the right time in the right way so when she had to go away for a couple of months and we had to um rely on dad and sister to kind of tend to ourselves um it was an interesting journey i'm sure it was much more interesting for my mom but at 8 years old i know the whole world revolved around myself um so i remember how we struggled a first few days just to cope up with you know getting ready um cooking breakfast making sure we were on time and the realization that a lot of effort went in to make things the way they are and it didn't just magically happen but it was mom actually doing all of that in the background i loved instant noodles when i was a kid and i always thought you know i could eat you know three times a day seven days a week without any issues but soon when you realize that that's the only thing that's available because dad is not so great at cooking and it's cold you soon realize that hmm instant noodles is probably not the best thing that you could have um i missed a lot of delicious food that my mom was cooking and i think the point that i'm trying to make is in spite of all of this we adapted we found a rhythm we want to we made sure that you know ultimately the house didn't burn down of course we were glad when mom came back but that was one of my earliest memories of how a change kind of made us realize that this is what it is and you got to deal with it in whatever shape or form that suits you best um moving on i think um the next um memory that i have is of me coming to um cmu to do my masters which was a change at so many levels um i remember the first few nights when i was thinking what the hell have i done and where have i landed um i didn't know anybody here i didn't have family to help me get settled in uh, but i guess what kept me going was the fact that this was part of a bigger picture and something that i chose to pursue uh from learning the lifestyle here to not spending too much because you know you're still in the mindset of converting dollars to indian rupees uh bearing the cold 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 pittsburgh winters to looking for a job because not because you just wanted to work because you needed it to stay in the country just the pure number of options in the grocery aisles which was pretty overwhelming and also meeting so many people with such diverse cultures i was so overwhelmed the first few days and i remember calling my mom you know a few more times than i usually do um i don't talk too much too often so when i called her you know at night and then i called her again in the mo- morning um she has this unique way of grounding me by saying you know we just slept in the night there's really nothing to talk about after 8 hours uh, but she also kind of shows me the mirror all the time and saying that you know you're not the first person going through this you made this choice because this is what you wanted to do um so get to it and get to you know what you wanted to achieve um i have moments when i question the decisions that i make but i there's always a bit of me that looks at the future and shows me that you know this is just a step towards um helping me grow um as i mentioned i think there's been many many instances where you know i can go back and reflect on life changing moments for me that either changed the way i think or defined me the way i am today um being an indian woman although we are progressing very quickly there is still a social idea of when you need to get married or settle down um thankfully my parents version of settling down was a little different um and maybe it's because they read a lot and they have a pretty open mind um for them it was being content happy financially stable and just continuous growth um because of this my version of settling down was buying a house and getting a dog um i did have a dog when i was a kid but i never realized that he was so well behaved and so good because all i had was happy memories of playing with him and you know the nice bits of it because my sister used to spend hours and hours behind the scenes training him um so when i got leo during the pandemic in the first few months were hard because i had never been through that process the potty training the constant biting the destroying of the furniture i was like oh my god like what did i do um I don't think in general I'm a very patient person but during those times I think the level of my patience changed drastically um 
but i soon realized now when i look at him that it was all worth you know all the struggles that i went through because now i i can't live without him um these are a few personal memories that i'm sharing but there are along with many health concerns and other things as well but um you know you just don't learn to live with the changes you adapt and you make it part of your life because you're not just surviving you're thriving to make sure that your journey is the best that it can be because we all know life is short um the one thing that my dad con- constantly reminds me is how these experiences kind of make you stronger um there is a saying in canada which is probably one of my dad's best quote and i'll try to do a good job of it explaining it in english um it says that you know when you carve a statue or a sculpture from a rock you got to hit it multiple times before it turns out to be this eventual you know beautiful sculpture so as long as these um hits doesn't break the stone um it's worth the number of hits that it gets because what turns out to be from a rock is a beautiful sculpture so all these events in your life personal professional are just molding us to be you know the beautiful self that we are uh, and we often emerge from difficult times with a fresh perspective of what bad is and a new appreciation for what is good um i remember exams for me when i was a kid was such a big deal and i thought if i can crack these exams there's nothing more difficult that i can you know not go through and now i'm like man i wish the only problem in my life was dealing with exams but that's how perspective changes as you learn and grow um moving on to my uh, professional journey um once i started my professional journey with dell um in as a software developer then i moved on to um cmu and from graduating from there i went to sears as part of this technology leadership program which gave me a platform to try out different things before i chose to pursue what made sense for me um i then spent a couple of years in walmart um helping with the pickup and delivery experiences and um building our own crowdsource platform currently i'm with sephora as i mentioned um leading all of their product um so i just wanted to share again a couple of experiences from my personal uh, professional journey that have kind of again dealt help me define who i am and how i adapt to change i think the earliest bit of it is um my switch from being a developer to a product manager um i was a developer back in dell and i soon realized that i wasn't just wired the way that you need of how a developer needs to be and it wasn't a match of match for me but i plowed on you know being me i can't let go i have to do my best um and i was like you know what i'm going to do it um in sears again when i started i worked on hadoop content moderation many many cool things but again i was like this isn't what i want to do so when i got an opportunity to switch um to product management i jumped on the chance although i truly didn't realize or know what product man- management was all about um and even today i think it's one space where um it really depends on how an organization defines it and having worked with multiple organizations the underlying principle still remain the same which is the fact that we are the voice of the customers and our single most important goal is to identify ways of how we can make it simpler and easier for um customers to complete their goal whatever it may be it could be making a purchase um you know um writing a review or outside of retail just completing a job um you try to learn how the ecosystem is set and find ways either to make progress by adapting to it to what exists or bringing about changes and improvements that is well acknowledged by the people around you currently um leading a large org today i don't think i would be able to do a good job if i didn't have the learnings that i had in the past couple of years and getting one thing right which is basically that there is no right or wrong way of problem solving there's only creative ways to make progress and being aware of progress as a whole is itself a major success
I think the next thing that kind of stood out to me was um, my experience in the various domains that I had to that I chose to work with um, during my journey so far. In Dell, it's all it was all about fraud detection. Um, there are a lot of smart people out there trying to hack the system in a lot of creative ways, and our job was to make sure we stop that. Um, in Sears, it had to do a lot with integrated retail, which was buy online, pick up in store, merchandise pickup, in vehicle pickup, returns and exchanges where you buy online, you park and we get your product to you in five minutes. Um, Walmart, um, a lot of pickup and delivery experience as well, but um, I had the unique opportunity of operating like a startup within a Walmart a company like Walmart, um, where we built our in-house um, crowdsourcing platform. Um, this was kind of unique because you're moving in the same fast-paced environment and with the do or die attitude like a startup, but you have the backing of a large company like Walmart. So it was kind of like best of both worlds for me. And um, I learned immensely from that experience. Um, in Sephora, I started with digital, which is basically your customer experiences on the app, websites, partnerships with um, calls and the other things that we're doing, um, along with uh, payments and loyalty. And soon I took on data and marketing um, tech as well. Um, just going through these various domains has given me a unique sense of um, you know problem solving to ambiguous problems. And I'm still learning how to get better at it. And I'm formulating my own personalized methodology of how um, I approach problems. I guess in a way of how we look at the world evolving to a hyper-personalized experience for customers, in a similar way, you can think about your journey and how it's going through a personalization journey of its own uh, because you are being more prudent and aware of yourself and your learnings and you're kind of catering your philosophy and strategy um, that works best for you and only you. Um, the other big thing that I think um, is a skill or is something that you know stood out to me was people management. And it's truly one skill that we need to approach with the mindset that you learn and unlearn every single day. And my approach to this has been learning from other people's mistakes as much as you can. I think people's career and growth is too important for you to make your own mistakes. So you never realize all the things that you crib about, you know, that you used to complain about your manager without knowing the full picture is something that you may fall prey to yourself, right? So just always pausing and thinking that, hey, did it upset me? Is this something that if I was in, you know, that shoes, would it make me happy? If not, then why would somebody else be happy? Um, but at the same time, again, it's not truly defined by your happiness. You still need to understand what would make that individual happy, but just always putting yourself in someone's shoes helps. Um, at the same time, building a theme for individual growth not just tied to a company, right? Because at the end of the day, we all want to grow as people. We all want to grow as product managers, irrespective of the fact that I'm working with Sephora or Walmart or Sears. I just want to be a good product manager, irrespective of where I am. So putting that lens on that you are building a team for individual growth um, is definitely something that would help you build a strong um product org in general. Um, I think the constant theme that you're seeing from the past couple of examples, and I can go on and on with many more, although cliched, but true is the fact that, you know, the only thing constant is change. Um, but one thing that we don't do is just be aware of the changes that we've gone through and how far we've come. Um, so the biggest takeaway for me is the fact that I pause and reflect on how I handle changes and seeing if I can do better um, in the way that I had done it in the past, not regretting and beating myself up because um, I do that. I used to do that a lot. Now I'm kind of working on that myself. Um, I'm a very emotional person and I know that's my strength because that makes me passionate, more empathetic towards people, 
and more aware of the changes that happen not just to me but to the environment around me and i make sure that i have a sense of how it impacts others and i leverage my strength and my areas of opportunities to create a better environment for everyone around me including myself and changes need not be like the big in your face kind of changes i know we all talk about the pandemic um but as you saw through the couple of examples that i spoke we have always been evolving to changes as humans and it could be small or it could be big ones right for example my dog is super sensitive to anything like he sniffs the wrong way and you know he's upset um so i had to go to the er multiple times i personally haven't been to the er myself touch wood but i've just gone through that and now i've learned from it and you know just how to manage that whole scenario of taking care of him um and making sure he's okay so irrespective of the big or the small changes just be cognizant of you know that you are constantly evolving as a person now that we spoke about you know what are the changes how do you know that you you've understood what these changes are what are some of the things that has worked for me to make sure that um i'm consistently making progress as as i navigate through this right the first and the foremost thing is just being customer obsessed i think this is part of our dna um as um as a product manager how do you make sure you always put that lens because it helps clarifying a lot of the gray areas to like black and white so that you can always think and do the right thing that makes sense for what your customers want um so this is probably something that is applicable in any scenario and just um a lens that you constantly need to put on um to navigate any change uh the next thing is understanding and harnessing the superpowers of your team i think while we build a team we all understand a common goal right like we spend time evaluating and assessing what success looks like uh making sure we get alignment and that could vary based on who you are um for example some people need numbers to prove success some people need a success story some people are okay with unknown factors as long as they get leadership alignment so identifying um what gets each individual on board and ensuring you provide them what they need to get them vested is the first step um the second thing is spending time to understand each other's nuances right we all have our individual personalities that makes us us um we all start the day hoping to make progress with no intention of you know making anybody's lives hard so when you're spending time with all of these people you need to understand how they're wired and how they operate to understand um to avoid a lot of unnecessary conflicts um this becomes harder as your team grows bigger but at times like this what has helped me is just observe people for a few days how do they work um how do they form opinion how do they adapt to new dynamics and constantly make myself aware of how people operate so that i can create an environment that is beneficial for most if not all um and last but not least like celebrate progress and not just success um i don't think i'm doing a very good job at this but i'm constantly learning because we always look at it's a launch or a product release or an expansion but we forget that there is progress being made every day um and there's a lot of things even realizing that not doing certain things is good is progress so um you i'm not saying like figure out the silver lining for every cloud but make sure you're able to identify the small steps to um that brings people together um and it's okay for you to take a back seat sometimes if at the end of the day the ship is headed in the right direction and you know you don't have to be leading the ship at all times um this is a little bit of a controversial one but i think what has helped me is you know take i know we always say be positive be optimistic but it's okay to sometimes take off the rose colored glasses and just anticipate the risk and the change so that you're better prepared and you're not caught caught off guard um of course there will be scenarios where you will be thrown things that you didn't expect but just 
going through this experience makes you better prepared and ready for whatever is you know thrown at you um the next thing is evolving your leadership style i particularly say evolve and not define because um um you consistently learn from your experiences and you change your leadership style as you grow so when people ask me hey what is your leadership style it's kind of hard for me to answer that because it's not set in stone in that day or that time right it it constantly evolves on what i learned what i changed how the environment is changing um but as you go through your personalization journey figure out what works for you and what works best for the others around you and make sure that it's not a stagnant process but a constantly evolving process where you learn to grow a lot more um last but not the least um think big i know if i can have a penny for everything every time i've heard this you know i would have many 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 pennies but then in this context what i mean is um let go of the smaller hiccups or focus on the smaller goal while you're looking at what does this all mean in the larger sense right in the grander scheme of things what you may have felt is a minor issue um or a major issue is probably very trivial my mentor always used to tell me you know is there some is this something that's going to keep you up at night 3 days from now 3 months from now 5 years from now and just putting that lens in mind kind of helps me put that into perspective of how much investment and time i need to spend in some of these changes and you know it's okay to like let go of the smaller things in view for the large goal so if you think small you know your world will be small but if you think big um your world will be big um learn from the changes try not to fall to um into the same hole twice but hey if you do fall to the same hole twice you you've gotten out of it before so you know how to get off it get out of it so do it faster and better um and at the same time um just constantly learn and continue to evolve on a day to day basis um that's what i had for you guys today um i loved um sharing a few tidbits of how my journey has been um thank you for having me here and now we'll move to q and a thank you